there are definitely going to help me get through this panel, though, I promise you. That. Um, I, I, I was taking pictures when I was four years old. Uh, I had a camera with me everywhere I went, and it wasn't filming it most of the time, but it was sort of like my prism that I looked through the world and protected the world from hurting me, I suppose. Uh, growing up, I moved twice a year, sometimes at least once a year, and uh, so I never really had the kind of relationship with people that you would expect to have if you stayed in one place at one time. And so I started looking at the world through this camera, and I really avoided people. You know, I looked, there's pictures of trees, there's pictures of outhouses. Right, yeah, I don't know how that happened. What happened was, I was using this as a barrier, basically, so I could look at the world without being looked at myself. And it was because I was walking around in, in a new neighborhood every six months. And um, then I got thrust into Santa photography when I was 16 years old. <laughs> there's um, Santa, yeah. Yeah, the guy I worked for retired after four years. He was one of the most prolific Santa photography tycoons you've ever heard of. And uh, so suddenly I decided, or I figured out um, that my job was to take about 7,000 pictures of children every, every, every Christmas season. And from that point on, I just had the ability to walk up to anybody with a camera and make them smile. And I found out that I loved it. So I went to college and I spent a lot of time on the beach basically drinking with my friends and waiting tables. But I grew up with a camera in my hand when I was in college and I came to Los Angeles and I had the same Hollywood story almost every one of you would want to have here, which is toiling in obscurity, basically for a long time to become an overnight success. And it really had something to do with just being in the right place at the right time and being prepared for it. So I was there sitting in a room with a bunch of people that were putting on something kind of like Live Aid. Do you all know Live Aid? It was yeah. a big concert. It was everybody that had ever been in music was there performing. So they were doing this benefit. And I was there basically to manage the press pool. I was going to be organizing the press photographers who were going to be photographing the event on stage. And I just sort of, sort of meekly said, maybe I should do a photo studio in the back and photograph all of these amazing people. And they said, perfect, do it. I had no qualifications um, besides the fact that I knew how to take a picture, but I hadn't proven it to anybody yet. And so on the night of the event, I basically turned around at one point, and I had Stevie Wonder and Neil Young and Jackson Brown and Whoopi Goldberg and Country Joe McDonald and dozens and dozens of people standing in line waiting for me to photograph them. And so in one night, I built a portfolio that basically said that I can take pictures of famous people. <laughs> Somehow different. I didn't have to put them on Santa's lap or anything like that. <laughs> And um, so I started toiling now in obscurity for a long time until finally I got lucky and got some jobs. And what I've discovered is that I've always loved taking pictures and when I got those kids in front of me with Santa, I realized I really loved that. And now I do it, I pinch myself all the time, I can't believe that this is my job. I would rather spend, I'd rather spend 20, 30 minutes or an hour and a half with Ron Perlman as Hellboy in Prague in the sets taking his picture then spend all day photographing the guy at home because I love the characters. I just think that the world that these people create that they inhibit in these films and to have the opportunity to really be there with them to see these spaces and to see them just create these characters in front of me is just like the coolest job there is. So that's what I do and I'm a lucky guy and I work every day to stay lucky. You have, you have brought a couple of his posters here too. Let's give away. Yeah, I went into storage. I don't collect these anymore because, uh, yeah. Your most recent one is Thor. Uh, yeah, that's out right now. Yeah. Uh, the right. Right. Stop collecting. Oh, they're big. They don't make them anymore. I can just tell you what they are. You want to know what they are by seeing them? Take it out. Take it out. Okay, we'll bring out the big one first. While we're showing these two, uh, let's talk a little, Peter, about the uh, real life superhero project that you're also uh, involved in. Queen of the Damned. Nice. I grab these because I like these a lot. Um, you should I've got some crap the same that I've done. I don't mention those movies, but I've definitely worked on my share of bad films. Go ahead, grab High School Musical. High School Musical, yeah. I, I didn't bring it. Did they remake uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night? So, 
Uh, I think anyone sitting in the back half is, uh, will not be getting prizes. I think it's only for the... I'm tired of yelling, you know? It's, uh, no, we'll figure out a democratic way. Do you want to uh, talk about, Peter, at all, the, the real-life superheroes project? Oh, yeah, you guys know about... Um, well, you know about these guys, right? These superheroes? You know there's real ones in the world, right? Have you heard yeah. about these guys? Real-life superheroes, they're called. Have you... Raise your hand if you've heard of these guys. Right? I know all of them. I've met most of them. I know them. I got them on their phone. They're probably calling me right now. I, I, I basically learned about this community of people, and, and you might think they're crazy, but they're actually just trying to make the world a better place. And they create these, these costumes and characters. They go by names like Night Vigil and the Vigilante Spider and uh, Phoenix Jones and Superhero and, and a bunch of others. Um, Master Legend, you might have read about Rolling Stone. And when I found out about them, I decided I wanted to make photographs of them. In fact, I decided to make movie posters of them. And so if you go on reallifesuperheroes.com, you'll see what we've done. I flew 20 of them to L.A. Uh, we photographed them. I worked with a bunch of the best artists in the movie, post movie poster business. And uh, wow, they're just incredible people that go out. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're raising funds. Right now we're doing something for a water well in Liberia that's going to basically serve about 300 people for average 20 years. And um, you know, one in eight children under the age of five die in Liberia from waterborne illness. And it costs 10 bucks per person to give that one person 20 years of fresh water with a well. So we're trying to basically help some people over there. And these guys are my heroes now because they're really living it and they're doing it. Some of them with modest means, some of them with a little bit more, but they just live the life of caring about others. And so check out reallifesuperheroes.com. You'll see who my friends are. Absolutely. We have uh, about five minutes left. And uh, real quick, we're going to talk about, I think, one of the, um, one of the lessons you learn from uh, Ken's book, The Way of the Nerd, uh, which you can see at thewayofthenerd.com, um, is that you, you, learn, um, you learn things, I think, outside of school that uh, are just as important as the things you learn, if it's not more important, the things you learn in school. I wonder if you guys could each share with us something you learned outside of the academic world that you still use today or a lesson that helped and benefited your career. In my life that way, and that's why I work at the coolest company in the world right now, Titmouse, because all the people there are really friendly, and uh, I, I can't think of another place that I would ever want to go work at. So usually now I'm like trying to branch into doing, like, I just shot my first horror movie with, uh, I've, you know, you, I've asked like back and forth between working in live action and working in animation. And uh, so now I'm like trying to go real school, you know, whatever you want to call it, like, you know, I'm making features next year. So that's gonna be fun for me, I miss doing it. And, but I've been trying to keep uh, a hold of, of staying at Titmouse because I have so many friends that I, I work with now. It's like a little family. And uh, that's what I would say is, uh, is try to work with your friends. If you have a group of people who are really, really good with you, uh, try to drag them into whatever you're doing. Like uh, for me, I forced people that I knew in Chicago to move <laughs> to LA to work on Metalocalypse. And it worked out for them. They ended up getting jobs and uh, they're all doing their own successful stuff now. And uh, that's what I, that would be my recommendation is, uh, is allow people, you know, the people that you're with who are really cool, try to hold on to them and we'll try to work with them because you'll work with people for you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Or longer, if, if you guys work out together. That was so I, serious, it wasn't funny. No, See, that's what it got me, the funny part. I think it was dry, I thought, I, I thought it was hilarious. Burger King, oh, yes. look at Burger King, he's here! Hungry. <laughs> you ready? Go ahead. Yeah. No, hit it. Yeah. I mean, ditto, and um, <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> You gotta have, uh, and you gotta learn this the hard way sometimes, but you gotta have that passion, and uh, you know, you, you gotta really like project and, and see yourself in a certain situation. Um, for me, you know, I've always had this vision of, of you know, getting my work out there and, and spreading it, and being surrounded by good people uh, is one of the things that helps you, put you in the right place at the right time, um, meeting the right people. But um, you gotta have that initial vision and I don't think I, you know, sometimes when you're young, it gets diluted, uh, a lot of stuff going on in the world, but if you, if you have that clear concept in your head, like where you want to see yourself, and you know, the things you want to do, the people you want to meet, uh, it, can, it can take you there. 
you know. I was a fan of George Lucas and, you know, thought I'd never meet him. And then I worked at the Family Guy and I'm painting, I'm recreating Star Wars posters and I'm going to Lucasfilm and, uh, you know, it was just dreaming and it happened. Legally going. Legally going. I'm not hopping fences. I'm going to guess time is short because I heard the band over there for a second, so I'll just say there's really three simple things that I care about. One is just choose to be happy, first and foremost. After you've chosen to be happy, find something that is your absolute passion and do it whether you're getting paid or not. If it's your passion, if you're happy and you do what you love, that's more important than anything else. And then if you can make a living at it, that's all the better. Yeah! Math and learn from the stuff that you are missing. Create your own path with your own vision.